Hello, my name is Tatlun Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch and author. And this little chat today is going to be about magic. Now, I think before we start, these are all very short chats, little sound bites if you like. Uh, but I think first of all, we need to say, what do we mean when we talk about magic? Now, some people spell it with a K on the end. I've even seen people spell it with a J and with a Q on the end. So there's all sorts of things people will do. I tend to stick to the ordinary spelling, M-A-G-I-C. Uh, part of the problem is that names and words have changed in meaning a lot over the years. I mean, you could say, well, magic from the point of view of doing spells is one thing. Uh, doing conjuring tricks on stage, pulling rabbits out of hats is quite another. Now today, if you can hear uh, strange noises, it's not actually the dog snoring. This odd noise is that we're having hailstorms off and on. And there's no way I can do anything about that. Uh, but what I was saying about words changing their meanings, uh, the word conjurer at one time was someone who performed exorcisms. So even there, we have to be careful how we use words. So let's start with what I mean by magic. Uh, for me, performing a spell, performing magic, is the act of trying to bend chance. It's trying to make something happen the way I want it to happen. And years ago, you know, when people didn't talk quite so much about magic and uh, things like that, uh, they certainly didn't talk about it freely, um, but there was always that feeling that somehow magic was a risky business. Now, to me, the only real risk with magic is that, for some people, it can become a crutch. It can become something they run to every minute. Uh, anything go wrong, quick, let's do a spell. And, of course, that's not good because it prevents you from fulfilling your potential. We all have potential as human beings, you know. And it's up to us to try to explore our lives, to examine our lives. And this is why I talk about spirituality so much and the spiritual path. Because being a witch for me is not just about doing spells. Uh, it would be a pretty empty life if it were. For me, it's about exploring my spiritual path, becoming the sort of person I would like to become. And yes, sometimes doing magic. Uh, now, as I say, at the one hand, you have people who will rush for the spell book the minute anything happens. Uh, at the other end, you have people who are so um, frozen that they will not perform a spell. They would have to be tied down to make them perform a spell. They will find all sorts of excuses not to perform a spell. They will say, oh, you can't do it without somebody's permission. You can't do it because it's going to harm somebody or alter something. Well, yes, what do you think is going to happen if you bend the rules of chance? Of course it's going to change things. But it's up to us as responsible human beings to see that what we're doing has a certain amount of ethical quality to it. The problem with people who become almost hidebound and terrified of performing spells is that not only will they not perform magic, but they won't want anybody else to perform it either. So, in the course of a couple of little talks now, um, we've explored a little bit about what magic is. As I said, it's about bending the rules of chance, and there are lots of ways you perform magic. Uh, you can do it by appealing to the gods or powers that you work with. You can appeal to them, please help me uh, ensure that such and such happens. You can do it by uh, what I call an entrusting spell, where you basically go to your gods or higher power, set out what the problem is and say, please will you deal with it as you see fit. And that's quite a useful one if you're really one of those people who uh, is terrified they're going to do something wrong or unethical. That's often a good way to get around it by putting the uh, decision off onto another power. And then, of course, you can do what a lot of witches do, myself included, which is to tend to just get on with it and do the spell. 
And there are several parts to doing a spell and there are often little words you will come across which can be a bit confusing so I'm going to go into those in another talk. Uh, but remember that magic can be observed or magic can be experienced and both are important. You can observe the magic in, in nature and you can look at it and say wow that's wonderful and you can perform magic for yourself which we hope will also be wonderful. And these things all go together, they, they blend together to form part of our mystical and magical experiences through life. Uh, I think it's very important not to feel that there's a single way to perform magic because there isn't. There are people who, if you mention magic, they start casting circles and calling quarters and doing heaven knows what. And then you get people like me who uh, don't, essentially. I, I don't do that. It's not what works for me. I'm a solitary and I find that if I expend a lot of energy on other things, um, then the energy needed to actually make the spell work, to propel it, uh, is all wasted. It's uh, all gone. By the time I'm ready to use it, it's gone. So I don't do my magic like that. And we'll come on to what I suggest works for me. But what I'm saying is that you must explore what works for you. Please don't be put off by other people telling me you, uh, look, that's wrong. You shouldn't do it like that. Experiment, especially if you're a solitary. Experiment gently. Write it down in your little book, uh, your notebook that I've mentioned in other talks. Write down exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it. Because what I like to do in a spell is to build up my energy, to build up my effort, and then pff, let it go. That's what works for me. You may find there's something totally different that works for you, and that's fine. Okay, so don't be afraid of it. Explore it, experiment, and see what works for you. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Goodbye.